Now we're going to create an expense class to create and manage a core data expense entity. Ensure before we generate these subclasses that when you select expense in the core data object um, editor, the data editor, ensure that the code gen over here says manual none. When it says manual none, go up to editor and go down to create NS managed object subclass, select expenses data model, select next, select the entities that you would like to generate a subclass for and click next. Before you click save, change your group from the project level to the correct folder or group that you want your files to exist in. In this instance, we're just gonna leave it in the upper level group and click create. This will generate two classes, two files for you, a core data class and a core data properties. Looking at the core data class, it is simply a class of expense with nothing in it. And looking at the core data properties is where the properties reside for our class. Each property is prefaced with this at NS managed and all of this is telling the compiler is that core data ultimately will handle the storage for this variable and not locally on the device. With these properties, pay attention to the raw date of type NS date. This would be a pain to interact with raw date as an NS date consistently throughout our code. So let's create a computed property to handle that for us. Navigate to the expense plus core data class. This is where our computed property is going to reside and begin by doing a computed property for date of type date optional. For this, we are simply going to return our raw, oh, return our raw date as date question mark. It has to be as date question mark optional because of the fact that raw date is an NS date optional. This is an ability to now we could use date as a property to retrieve our dates from our core data model without actually having to interact with NS date. So if we wanted the end of state, we could go to raw date. If we want a date, we can go to the computed property date. Right now, this computed property is only a getter. Let's modify this so it's both a getter and a setter for our raw date property. Let's use the getter notation to change this to an explicit get statement by writing get curly braces return raw date as date. And now use the setter notation to create a setter for this computed property. If you do not explicitly say the name of the new value, it will always be given to you as new value. So let's set our raw date equal to new value as NS date question mark. At this moment, we can now interact with our date computed property for both getter and a setter to do the conversions to NS date for us. So now that we have our properties and attributes all finalized for this entity, let's create one of these entities. And we're gonna do it through an initializer. So let's begin by creating a convenience, init, and more specifically, this is gonna be a failable convenience initializer. So right after init, add the question mark to indicate failure. And then let's say name of type string optional, amount of type double, and then date as date optional. Here we need to get a few things before we can actually persist this object into core data. The first thing that we need to get is our managed context. So let managed context equals, and I'm gonna start typing UI, and that's not gonna actually get me anything because I want a UI application. The reason why autocomplete is not working is because I'm importing foundation instead of UI kit. So change foundation to UI kit, and now when I start typing UI application, it will autocomplete for me. 
select that and select a property on it called shared and access the shared's delegate and let's cast that as a app delegate. This is the same app delegate that we have over in our project navigator by selecting it. This is the app delegate that we are ultimately casting to and we want to get the persistent container out of this app delegate class. So with our managed context, let's now get the persistent container. Actually, let's change this constant from managed context to app delegate because I'm going to split this up into a few lines of code. Next, let's call this a managed context is equal to app delegate dot persistent container dot view context and notice the type of view context is NS managed object context. You could think of a managed object context as a scratch pad. Essentially, you can create, delete as many objects you want on this context, but until you save this context, it will not actually persist into Encore data. So let's access our context and let us verify that this managed context is, exists using a guard let statement. So instead of doing that on another line, can't we just do it on this line, Dale? Sure. So it would be guard let manage context else return nil. We have to return nil because since this is a failable initializer, we need to indicate a failable state. Now that we have our managed context, let's call an existing initializer by calling self dot init. And this init takes in two parameters, an entity description and a managed object context. Well, we already have the managed context, so let's put that in. And now let's talk about an entity description. The entity description is describing the entity in the core data model. And simply, since we've generated subclasses or if you've used class definition, you can get the entity description off of a core data backed object by typing the object's name in and typing dot entity and it will generate an entity description for you. This is compared to passing in a string into the entity description and a lot safer ultimately in code. Now that we've called this initializer, we can actually now initialize our attributes. So it would be self.name equals name, self.amount equals amount, and self.date equals date. Again, this date is actually our computed property, so we no longer actually have to interact with raw date. At this time, if a coder, a developer, interacts with this convenience initializer, this object would actually be persisted into core data and initialized with the correct attributes as long as they save the managed object context.